she is she's the fairy godmother of of knitting as far as I'm concerned <laughs> Happy New Year everybody! Welcome back to my channel. I'm Kristen and if you are new, this is a channel where I sit down with you every week and share what I've been making, primarily knitting, sewing, quilting, or whatever other crafty rabbit hole I happen to be diving down. If that's your jam, gather around, grab a cup of something, and let's get into things. But first I do have a couple, couple of announcements before I get into the nitty gritty of things. Uh, first up, you might notice yet some more changes happening to the channel. Uh, I, yes, I did indeed change my channel name back to Woolen Vine. Uh, yes, this channel has gone through many incarnations as far as names. Um, if you've been with me since the very beginning, you might know that it started out as Yarngasm. <laughs> And then I changed it to Woolen Vine to kind of go hand in hand with my hand dyed yarn company. And then during the pandemic, I I don't know what it was, something was in the water, I was desperate for a change up, so I changed my channel name to my namesake, Kristen Lair. And while that's all fine and good, I've given it some thought over the holiday break, and I really actually prefer just to keep it Vine, just to make things simple all under one umbrella, my YouTube channel, my Instagram, and my hand dyed yarn company. It makes things a lot easier. Rest assured, I don't plan on changing up anything else other than the name at this point in time. Anyway, just wanted to clarify that in case there was any confusion. We are indeed going back to Vine as the name of this here YouTube channel. I hope you're excited about that. I mean, during the pandemic, there was just, I, I had a dark period where I was just so desperate for something new some novelty and we were all just home stuck at home not being able to go out and do anything I was desperate for change and my YouTube channel my brand was the low-hanging fruit I did jumble things up a little bit but I feel like I'm coming back things are going back to the way they used to be and I'm I'm really liking it so anyway that said uh, as far as other announcements if you checked your YouTube feed yesterday you might notice that I published three different tutorials uh, on one how to do a long tail cast on and how to do the basic knit stitch and how to do the basic purl stitch these are all super beginner techniques and even though I have a funny feeling many people watching this are more seasoned knitters you have a lot of experience under your belt I see you and I know you're probably thinking Kristen why why are you uploading these super easy beginner tutorials I've always wanted to publish some beginner friendly tutorials here on this channel just just in case there's somebody out there browsing YouTube and looking for a you know tutorial on how to knit because you know they either you know have been dreaming about knitting they want to learn how to knit or maybe they forgot how to knit and they want to pick it back up again. I know there are a million and one tutorials on learning how to knit, but sometimes, I know personally when I'm learning, when I'm looking on YouTube to learn how to do something, I don't just click on one tutorial and I'm good. I watch a whole bunch of tutorials because sometimes there's that one, one video where someone explains something in a way that just clicks and resonates. And who knows, you know, if, if I can contribute to the, the melting pot of knitting tutorials for beginners, then, uh, you know, yeah, why not? So I just put those out there yesterday, and, you know, if you are a new knitter and you have stumbled upon my YouTube channel, hello, welcome. I am so excited and so happy to have you here. Uh, I, I hope you learn a lot, and, yeah, and have fun at the same time, because I like to have fun, and I have a feeling that a, lo a lot of my lovely viewers like to have fun as well. So anyway, I think, I'm checking my notes, I think that's it as far as announcements. Um, but yeah, I, I'm back from a quite a long hiatus. I took a couple weeks off from recording uh, for Christmas and New Year's and I think a week before that. I just needed to clear the decks, guys, and it felt really good just to sit and knit and do absolutely nothing. Um, I think I sat just a little too much because my back <laughs> is kind of giving out a little bit and I need to do some stretches um, and, and move my body just a little more than I have. Anyway, uh, enough waffling on uh, in the intro. I've got a lot to catch you up on. Marga the Mannequin, she is wearing an oldie but a goodie. Uh, this, I have to say, is probably one of my very first sweaters that I've ever knit. This is a sweater that 
I knit using Elizabeth Zimmerman's sweater percentage system. And if you're not familiar with Elizabeth Zimmerman and her sweater percentage system, oh my goodness, what are you doing with your life? It's from her book, Knitting Without Tears. And yes, if you are a knitter or learning how to knit, this is essential reading. This is a must for every knitter's library. I have to say, it's just one of those books that every knitter should own. But I picked this up on recommendation and it is a, it's worth its weight in gold, my friends. Everything that Elizabeth Zimmerman writes is just gold. Uh, and there's one section in here where she has, she shows you how to basically design your own sweater from scratch using this percentage system. So you do a little bit of math. You, you do have to knit a gauge swatch, uh, you know, measure, figure out your swatch and then do a little bit of simple math and then distribute those numbers across a couple of percentages and boom, you have a knitting pattern recipe. If you're a prolific sock knitter, you probably have your own go-to sock knitting recipe. Once you figure out your gauge and you have those numbers, it's just plug and play and you're off. And that is exactly what I did with this sweater. Um, the yarn that I used to knit this is Lion Brand Fisherman's Wool and two different colorways. I think it's this gorgeous chocolate brown and a undyed natural heather color, I wanna say. And I want, I think I knit this, this sweater is as old as Dennis and I are married. So I wanna say like 11, 11, 12 years, give or take, because I remember knitting it on our summer vacation right after we got married and I was working on it. So it is held up so well over the years. Uh, it's just such good workhorse yarn, super sturdy, keeps me super warm. For the first five or six years, this sweater got so much play for me. I mean, it, it just matched with everything. It kept me warm and, I, I, I definitely need to give it some more love. Um, and if you're wondering about the color work, you're probably saying, Kristen, that was one of your first sweaters and recipe in here, really? Uh, yeah, let me, let me explain. I figured out how to knit the sweater as a whole, but then I also had a stitch dictionary of color work motifs. Um, I'm blanking. I have a, I have so many, but I just, you know, once I had the, the cast on numbers, I was able to find a motif that would fit within those numbers. And again, it was just simply plug and play. I picked a motif and worked it into the pattern and it was super, super easy. And I believe this was actually knit from the bottom up. So you start with the cast on for the body. It's all just knitting in the round up, set that aside. You knit your sleeves. That's all knit in the round up. And then you join everything in the round and then you just knit your yoke in the round, decreasing as you go, and it gets smaller and smaller and smaller, and all you have to do is knit the neckline and you have a sweater. And I should mention that Elizabeth Zimmerman, the, the patterns in here are not written the way, you know, a standard knitting pattern is written that, that you know, we're familiar with today. Um, it's very, it's written as prose, so, um, you know, it's more like having someone in the room with you just chatting and showing you and teaching you how to knit a pattern. It's very, very colloquial and, you know, I, I love her style. She's just so funny and witty and just, you know, tells it like it is. And that's exactly how this book reads. So, you know, again, this book is geared towards knitters of every level. Um, and dare I say, it is kind of, you know, a gateway drug into sweater design because yeah, it's like figuring out your gauge, working through all the components of sweater construction. And this isn't the only pattern she has in this book. She actually covers the whole gamut. I think she's got about like three or four patterns in here. Yeah, she has, again, the around yoke, she has raglan sleeves, and then she also has like a saddle shoulder that you can knit. Um, really, really interesting construction. So you can kind of work your way up the, the technique ladder, if you will. Um, yeah, she even has drop shoulder in here um a kangaroo pouch sweater seriously get your mitts on this if you don't own it um highly recommend anything elizabeth zimmerman knits because let's face it she is she's the fairy godmother of of knitting as far as i'm concerned as far as what i'm wearing this week i am wearing my ranunculus and again this is a pattern by midori hirosa and it's knit out of a combination of what is it ilamani uh, sabri and ito sensei um, lace mohair, holding those two together. And my goodness, my friends, I, I absolutely love this sweater. Actually, I think Margot the Mannequin was wearing this in the last episode that I recorded. So I'm not gonna get into detail about this pattern. I will link 
to the video where I chat chat about it at length in the doobly-doo up here in case you're curious, but uh, yeah, easily one of my favorite makes. It was the first sweater that I finished when Dennis and I moved into this house about a year ago. Um, so many, so many happy memories knit into this and mm, so glad, so glad it is sweater weather that I can finally enjoy it. As far as finished objects, I do not have any finished objects to share with you this week because <laughs> over my break, I, you know, <laughs> I cast on all the things, my friends, all the things. And one of those things was the no frills pullover. This is a pattern by Petite Knit and it has been on my queue for quite some time, my friends. Uh, Ellie, Skandier, Ellie of the Skandier Knits podcast, or who's also known as Skandier, she introduced me to this pattern. I think she actually gifted it to me a long time ago. So Ellie, if you are watching, Thank you, I'm finally knitting it. And oh my goodness, it is so simple, so easy, and it is exactly what my soul needed over the break because I'm not gonna lie, I was feeling rather burnt out and I just, I really just wanted to cast something on and go. All I wanted to do was knit stockinette in the round, not have to fuss with a gauge, not, not that I ever do, but just, you know, cast something on and not have to think about it. And that's exactly what this pattern is. It is knit out of my hand dyed yarn, Volenvine yarns in the Gashley Crumb colorway. And I'm knitting it holding together two strands, uh, Volca, which is my fingering weight merino nylon cashmere blend, and Ghost Lace, which is my lace weight mohair silk blend. And it is like, a little bit of luxury, my friends. Just like that whole combination of the cashmere and the, the mohair and the silk and the merino, it's just, oh, so, so good. And I know I'm biased because it is my yarn that I dyed, but you know, I'm not lying when I say it just feels so nice and I cannot wait to get this on my person. <laughs> it just, it really does feel like a warm hug, if you will, a luxurious warm hug. And I'm also really excited about this project because I don't know if you remember, but several years ago, I had knit the featherweight cardigan by Hannah Fettig using this same exact colorway, a different base, but very similar in that it had mohair, it had alpaca, and I wore the living daylights out of this sweater. Uh, it was a cardigan actually. Um, but unfortunately, somehow it found its way into the wash and shrunk a tale of woe to be sure. But again, it was a cardigan that I wore so often. It was easily one of my favorites. Um, however, the problem that I had with the featherweight cardigan is that it, just the construction of it, it would always fall off my shoulders. And I know I'm not alone because there were other people who have knit the pattern that said they were experiencing the same thing. So I haven't come across another cardigan pattern that I wanted to knit out of this yarn. And long story short, I set the yarn aside and went through my Ravelry queue and the no frills pullover popped up. I was like, done, done deal, it's happening. And here we are. So as you can see, this has been getting quite a lot of love for me over the break. I'm already, I'm right, I have a couple more rows of ribbing to do and then I get to bind off and then we're on Sleeve Island and I will have a finished no frills. I probably would have been done a lot sooner had a pooling incident not occurred. <laughs> and again, if you follow me on Instagram, I did talk about this, but um, it's the nature with all hand dyed yarn. You you know, if you're lucky, you can get away with just knitting with one skinny yarn and not having to alternate. But in most cases, you're gonna run into some pooling issues. And whether or not you choose to embrace the pooling is up to you. I mean, pooling certainly has a place. For me, I, I'm not a fan of pooling, so I did end up ripping back quite a lot. I mean, I was, I might have been around here where the pooling began, and I was like, nope, I don't want to deal with that. So I ripped it out um, about like maybe two inches or whatever, introduced a new skein that I essentially just alternated between. So you knit one row with one skein, switch to the other skein, knit a row with that. Um, the only nuance is that I went with the helical knitting method, and it's, it is the same method as alternating skeins, but it's just a slight nuance to the technique. And um, the best way I can describe it is you knit one round, switch to the other skein, knit another round, stop three stitches before the the last yarn change, slip those stitches purlwise and continue with the other uh, skein stop three stitches before the last change and continue on with that one. If that makes absolutely no sense, I will post a link down in the description box below to a tutorial on helical knitting uh, that should clarify it all. But it's, it's pretty brilliant and it does a really good job of, let me stand up so you can see, it does a really good job of blending 
the yarn together to kind of conceal any pooling. You can see some faint pooling happening here, but honestly, you cannot avoid it. Um, but thanks to the heel gold knitting and the alternating skeins, it's more spread out and less dense and prominent if that makes any sense. Um, but yeah, again, nothing that's gonna bother me when I wear it. I did get one or two comments on my Instagram post uh, from some people wanting to know whether or not the, the no frills pullover would be good for a beginner sweater knitter. And yes, absolutely. This sweater and the Elizabeth Zimmerman percentage system <laughs> sweater are excellent first sweater patterns for beginner knitters. And it got me thinking that maybe I will do a, an episode where I uh, recommend sweaters that I have knit that would be good for first time sweater knitters because I definitely, I've knit a lot of sweaters in my day and I definitely have a handful that um, I could recommend for people wanting to knit their first sweater. So let me know down in the comments below, is that something that you'd like to see? And, and I would be happy to oblige you. Uh, so yeah, that is the No Frills Pullover by Petite Knit. Uh, needles, uh, I'm using, again, I didn't swatch. I'm knitting the smallest size and um, the needle size that I'm using is, I believe, a US size 6, 4.0 millimeter, and for the ribbing, I am using a US 2.5, what, pray tell, is that in millimeters? 3.00 millimeter. That was all the knitting that I did over break, but I was, I was a little naughty. I did treat myself to some new yarn because I can't help myself. Let me backtrack a little bit. Black Friday. There were a lot of sales on Black Friday, and I I will readily admit that I indulge in some Black Friday sales. However, um, you know when you see like these really beautiful cashmere scarves, um, while they are on sale, I'm still not really exactly willing to splurge on a cashmere scarf. When in fact, you know, looking at it, I'm just like I could I could totally knit that myself. So I hopped on webs to see what I could see, and I found this really beautiful yarn. I mean, it's actually not new to me because I knit with the, another line of their yarn before, but Lamana Milano. And my goodness, my friends, it's delightful. This is 90% super fine merino and 10% cashmere, and holy cow, it is so soft. And yeah, I got several skeins of this. Uh, I think they were having a sale. So anyway, there's a little bit of a discount on this. Uh, I got seven skeins. So that's, I think, plenty to knit a really long rectangular shawl or stole, I should say. I have grand plans to design this thing and it's gonna be super simple too. It's not gonna be elaborate. It's not gonna have lace or cables. It's, it's just going to be a straightforward rectangular shawl that I can just wrap around my neck and, be cozy and yeah, nothing fancy, keeping it simple and very, very excited for that. Um, so yeah, that's gonna be my handmade, <laughs> handmade fancy schmancy cashmere, cashmerino shawl. Again, like, you know, browsing fast fashion websites and I really just want a plain knit black hat with a pom pom on it. So uh, again, it's all about the cashmere. So I picked up two skeins of this Ella Ray Casmerino Sport Black. Uh, again, I just want a simple black hat with a pom-pom. And yeah, it is just so incredibly super soft. Uh, yeah, just want to knit a simple hat out of it. And of course I popped over to my local yarn shop, the Nimble Thimble, and picked up a pom-pom. So we're gonna go, we're gonna go with this look right here. Um, as far as a pattern, I'm not sure. I was trying to come up with something, you know, I had some other black yarn in my stash that I was trying to work out a bubble stitch pattern with. Um, but at the end of the day, I think I really just want a simple plain stockinette knit hat that will go with everything. And holy cow guys, there's a lot of fluff flying around my craft room right now and it's tickling my nose. So I apologize if I, I get the nose scratchies. It's, it's inevitable with no, with mohair and fluff. Um, but we're rolling with it. So that was my webs haul, uh, mini webs haul, if you will. And then I did go to Michael's and they were having a, a crazy sale on yarn. I think it was buy one, get one 50% off on all their yarn. So could not help myself. Um, it's actually over here. Um, yeah, let me backtrack a little bit because several weeks ago I went to Michael's and saw this yarn. <laughs> Guys, I knit with fancy yarn and I knit with budget yarn and I am absolutely here for it. And yeah, uh, a couple, several weeks ago, I wanna say before the holidays, I picked up two skeins of this uh, Lion Brand Yarns Wool Ease Thick and Quick. Um, there's definitely acrylic in here. Let me see, yeah, 80% acrylic, 20% wool. But this color, 
just spoke to my soul on so many levels. I had no idea what I was going to knit with it. Um, I thought about maybe knitting myself a hat or even, dare I say, a sweater for Dennis. I just had to pick up this color. It was just so gorgeous. I mean, it's black, but has like a, um, an orangey brown tan and taupe marl to it. And yeah, I, I loved it. I just wanted to knit with it. So I got two skeins of it. Still had no idea what to do with it. Fast forward to after Christmas, Michaels was having their blowout yarn sale and I picked up a whole bag <laughs> of sweaters. I think I actually just cleaned them out. I think I got like five or six skeins of it. Um, and it all just came to like, what, $27 a steal. So yeah, got a whole SQ's worth of that. And yeah, I honestly don't know what I'm gonna make with it, but I think it's gotta become a sweater of some kind. So yeah, let me see, what is that? Uh, each skein has 87 yards or 80 meters and it's super bulky yarn. So even if I do knit a sweater for Dennis, this is gonna knit up super quick. Um, he doesn't know that I have plans to knit him a sweater. Again, not making any promises, but the temptation is there. So yeah, that, my friends, is I think all that I have to chat about with you today. I'm trying to think if there's anything else. Um, I may take another brief hiatus just because my birthday is coming up and Dennis and I may be getting out of town <laughs> for that. I don't know. Um, again, all our plans are still very much up in the air, but I am, for the most part, back to my regular recording schedule of publishing a video, you know, once a week. So there's that. But other than that, yeah, I'm just, I'm just so happy to be back. Uh, and yes, thank you so much as always for hanging out with me. Uh, if you're new here, welcome. If you haven't already, feel free to like and subscribe down below. As I said, I'm putting out videos for your viewing pleasure on a regular basis. Uh, and if you'd like to support this channel, uh, you can do so by joining and for the price of a fancy schmancy cup of coffee every month you can enjoy some bonus content from yours truly just be sure to check out what each tier offers because each tier is not the same or they offer different perks if you will so anyway um, all right until the next video happy knitting happy new year and I will see you next time bye